Welcome back to the aerodynamics class. So today we will be discussing on lifting flow over a circular cylinder, right? So I acknowledge uh, John D. Anderson's fundamentals of aerodynamics, right? Now um, we will go to the fourth elementary flow before looking into the lifting flow over the circular cylinder, right? You know already the three uh, elementary flows. The three elementary flows, one start with uniform flow. Then we have a source flow and associated sink and combination we have discussed. Then doublet flow. And the fourth one, now we will discuss is the vortex flow, right? So vortex flow is the uh, fourth elementary flow, right? So uh, let us concentrate on the vortex flow now and uh, we will look into its characteristics. So we already know uh, a little bit about the vortex flow, right? So we have a vortex. Right? So let me uh, mark this flow direction. And the origin is O. And from the origin, we have R. And the velocity along theta is theta. And we already know that we consider this as theta. And uh, the direction in the R is VR. So we have all this information before. And now uh, we will start discussing about the vortex flow because we need a vortex flow in order to um, study the lifting flow over a circular cylinder, right? So here the velocity along any given circular streamline will be constant, right? So the velocity in any circular streamline will be constant, but it can vary from one streamline to the another streamline and it is inverse with the distance from the common center O. So this is the basic definition for the um, vortex flow. Say we can say that along VR, this is VR, we have zero velocity we can say. Similarly in V theta, V theta is like this and we say that the V velocity varies with respect to R. So it is inversely proportional, right? So here we can say that vortex flow is physically possible incompressible flow and hence if we say incompressible flow, then we can say delta V is equal to zero at every point. And the vortex flow, say if you have an element here, a fluid element, it moves like this, right? So we can say that the vortex flow is a irrotational flow, right? So if we say that it is a irrotational flow, then del cross V is equal to zero at every point except at the center. So this is the center. So this we can say that it is irrotational 
except at the center. Please note, except at the center O. Right? So we know V theta varies, that is C by R, and hence we need to evaluate the constant C now. We know R. Right? So to evaluate C, we already know the circulation around a given uh, circular streamline of radius R that we have mentioned as gamma that is equal to negative of the closed integral over C V dot ds. Here we say that V here V theta right instead of V we will take V theta and ds it, it goes around one circle and hence we will take this as minus V theta into 2 pi r. So we can write now V theta is equal to minus gamma by 2 pi r. So this is V theta. And another V theta you already know, V theta is equal to C by R. And hence I write C is equal to gamma, say minus gamma by 2 pi. Right? So one can write the gamma that is equal to minus 2 pi c where this gamma is the strength of the vortex flow strength of the vortex flow so vortex flow is irrotational everywhere and except at the point where r equal to 0, right? So I will write this statement. I want you to work on that and come back. Uh, right? Or we can also derive, say, vortex flow. Is irrotational. everywhere except at r equal to 0 where at r equal to 0 r equal to 0 it becomes infinity so one can ask a proof, say if we say vortex flow is infinity, then one can say that del cross V is equal to infinity. So I want you to work on this particular proof and keep it in your notebook and I can ask the points in the next class. So vortex flow is irrotational everywhere except at the origin, R is equal to zero. Right? At r equal to 0, it becomes infinity. Okay. Now, as usual, we want to calculate our velocity potential and steam function. Let us calculate the velocity potential and the steam function. So, I, I, I want you to calculate by yourself because so far we have done um, for every other elementary flows. So, please do it by yourself. Velocity potential. So velocity potential of the vortex flow dou phi by dou r that is equal to vr and we know vr is equal to 0. Okay. Similarly 1 by r into dou phi by dou theta is equal to v theta and 
v theta is equal to minus gamma by gamma by 2 pi r and hence uh, from this we can write phi right phi is equal to minus gamma by 2 pi into theta so this is the velocity potential of the vortex flow similarly i want you to calculate the stream function right please calculate the stream function psi so we can write again the equation 1 by r into dou psi by dou theta is equal to vr and that is equal to 0 and minus dou psi by dou r is equal to v theta that is equal to gamma by 2 pi r right so v theta is equal to minus gamma by 2 pi r and from this we can write psi is equal to gamma by 2 pi ln r so please note all these points so this is the fourth elementary flow that is vortex flow right? so we calculated the strength of the vortex flow and then we have calculated the stream function and the potential function now if you see um, the all the elementary flows you have we have calculated the uh, velocity steam function and the potential function i mean velocity potential and steam function so with all this we can do lot of other uh, combination and arrive to various useful results in the aerodynamics right so please note and please check whether you have arrived to this particular point in all your calculation right so please check now uh, we will go to the next point our lifting flow over the circular cylinder so this you already know what is this the uniform flow and the doublet combination in order to create the flow over a circular cylinder right now what i have is i have a flow over a circular cylinder right so if i say i have a flow over a circular cylinder say this is a circular cylinder flow over a circular cylinder for non-lifting case so this is actually the flow over the circular cylinder for non-lifting case and the circular cylinder of radius r right and of course you know the velocity v infinity from the uniform flow right and we have already shown that the outside the cylinder there is a uniform flow and the uniform flow does not know about the circular cylinder and what is happening inside and hence we can replace this circular cylinder by a solid circular cylinder and all those points we have discussed right now what i am going to do is i am going to add one vortices vortex flow so let me add one vortex flow the vortex flow to the non-lifting flow over a circular cell then i will get the flow over the circular cylinder for 
rotating case, right? Lifting flow. So if I have such thing, then my flow will be like this. Because I have a rotating circular cylinder. You have a radius R. Right? So the non-lifting flow over a circular cylinder, I add an elementary flow that is vortex flow and create lifting flow. Please remember. Here it is non-lifting flow. Very interesting in aerodynamics. So please um, have a look into that. Non-lifting flow, when you add it with the vortex flow, you will be getting a lifting flow. This is what you write. Right? Non-lifting flow, vortex flow of strength gamma, you will have a so here you already know that for a non-lifting flow, we have derived the stream function that is pi is equal to V infinity R sine theta into 1 minus R square by R square plus gamma by, sorry. So, yeah. So, what is that uh, psi? V infinity R sin theta. Right? So, what about for vortex flow? Gamma by 2 pi lam R. So here we have gamma by 2 pi lam r. Right. So the combination we need to study. Now let me write the equation like um, for our uh, discussion sake I will write psi 1 that is equal to v infinity r sin theta into 1 minus r square by r square and psi 2 that is because of the vortex flow I can write a gamma by 2 pi lan r but when we write lan r in this equation we add a constant right so this is the stream function this constant can be an arbitrary constant and uh, this arbitrary constant for our discussion sake we will take this as lan capital R. So this psi 2 we will define gamma by 2 pi lan R by R. So we have psi 1 and psi 2. right? So the resulting stream function, we want to write this as V infinity R sine theta into 1 minus R square by R square plus gamma by 2 pi lan R by R. So this is actually the flow, lifting flow over a circular cylinder, right, psi 1 plus psi 2. Now, there is a question, right, we already know when this R becomes capital R, then the equation of the circle of radius R can be calculated, right. So, we can have a, a, a discussion. In this case, your flow is not symmetrical about the horizontal axis, but it is symmetrical about the vertical axis, right? And when it is symmetrical about the vertical axis, we know that there is a 
drag force which is zero right so since it is symmetrical about the x axis the drag may become zero but it is not symmetrical about the y axis right a it is not symmetrical about y axis and there is a variation right so we cannot say at y axis the force is zero right the lift may be not equal to zero right so we can calculate further now we want to calculate the velocity right so the velocity can be calculated by adding the two that is vr what is vr and write vr is equal to 1 minus r square by square v infinity cos theta what about v theta minus please go through your uh, last class lecture 1 plus r square by r square v infinity sin theta minus gamma by 2 pi r so this is our uh, velocity right velocity for the vortex flow we add that velocity for the vortex flow right now when r is equal to capital r what will be the theta so please calculate and let me know and r is equal to r what will be the theta any anyone r is equal to capital r what is theta come on danisha so um theta is equal to sin inverse of minus gamma by here you have a r square so it become 2 so this become 4 pi v infinity r right okay now um, you have theta value right why we want to calculate theta value because theta is the location you have theta here is theta so theta is the location where it will show where is the stagnation point say for example in this case you have a stagnation point at this point and this point any aerodynamist can say because the flow goes and hits at a particular point where the velocity of this um, particular flow becomes zero then it is a stagnation point so in this case if you see the stagnation point lies at third and fourth quadrant so um, so theta is equal to sin inverse of gamma by 4 pi v infinity r so this becomes an important point and uh, 
since we consider gamma is a positive number so in in this case we have third and fourth quadrant the stagnation point lies right we okay, will see what happens if gamma is equal to 4 pi v infinity r right so this is the case when gamma is less than 4 pi v infinity r we have a stagnation point lies here and here right so this is actually um, the case of case 1 You have already theta that is equal to sine inverse of minus gamma by 4 pi v infinity r. So, if gamma is less than 4 pi v infinity r, we have a stagnation point lies at this location. If it is equal to 4 pi v infinity r, we can say that the stagnation point lies at this particular point and if it is greater than 4 pi v infinity r such a case is um, really a, a critical case where we used to say that the point 4 is a stagnation point lies outside the circular cylinder and another one lies inside the circular cylinder but inside the circular cylinder has no meaning right so uh, this may be a critical case. So, uh, anyone need to understand the value of gamma, whether it is greater than or less than or equal, what will be the case? Theoretically, one should be able to discuss. Right? Okay. So, we will move to the next point. Calculating the velocity on the surface of the circular cylinder, right? Do you remember when we calculate the velocity, then only we can calculate the coefficient of pressure. So, we can calculate the velocity on the surface. So, at R is equal to R, we can calculate, we know V is equal to, in our case it is V theta, that is minus 2 V infinity sine theta minus gamma by 2 pi, I write capital R since we say gamma by, I mean R is equal to R. So, can you calculate what is Cp? Because Cp is equal to 1 minus V by V infinity square. And uh, do you remember for non-lifting case, you have considered this and you have made this as 1 minus 4 sine square theta. This is for non-lifting case. Now calculate it for the lifting case. What is the CP for lifting case? So please do it and let me know. What is CP? Any, anyone? Anyone? Mugil? Mugil? 
Danisha. Sir, it's one minus uh, uh, whole um, four sine square plus gamma square by four pi square r square minus uh, two uh, sine theta gamma by pi r. Yeah. Four sine square theta plus two gamma sine theta by pi r b infinity plus gamma by two pi r b infinity square. So this is actually the CP for lifting case. Okay. So, this is just an example of flow over a circular cylinder, and you have a flow separation, and you have a vertices formation. Now, what will happen if I rotate the cylinder? If I have a spinning, then I spin it with a particular velocity, right? Now, what happens if I increase the velocity, increase the spinning? You see the here, the stagnation point lies somewhere here. And here, the stagnation point lies somewhere that we really couldn't find. Right. Okay, so we have a CP. Now, if one knows the CP, we can calculate the coefficient of drag and the coefficient of lift. Right. As you know very well that integrating the coefficient of pressure can give the coefficient of drag and uh, the coefficient of lift by um, having it in the y direction. Right. So let us write uh, the aerodynamic force coefficient. Aerodynamic force coefficients. So in any case, if you have a CP, say I will take this point, the CP, and this perpendicular area, so I can take this as dy. If I multiply this, I can get the uh, coefficient, I mean, drag force at one point. And if I have CP2, and if I have a dy, then I can say that CP1 minus CP2 into dy will give my drag force. Similarly, if I want to calculate the lift force, this is the dx and the pressure CP3 and CP4. So if I write CP4 minus CP3 into dx will give me the, it will give the lift force. Okay, so with this background, let us derive the aerodynamic coefficients. So let us write CD, and here CD is an axial force, so I write CA also. So 1 by C, C is the chord length or the diameter of the circular cylinder from the leading edge to the trailing edge. So I can, I can say that this is the leading edge and this is the trailing edge right so we can write one by one, one over c leading edge and cp upper minus cp lower into dy right so what is y here y is equal to 
R sin theta and dy is equal to R cos theta d theta. And what is Cp? You already know Cp. Here is the thing. So, if I reduce this equation, so I can write the C. C is actually the circular cylinders C. This is C. And the T can be written as 2R. Right? So, one can write here CD. So, CD is equal to 1 by 2. Right? Integral. Pi to 0. Because as per our convention, this is 0. And you move here, this is 90 degree and this is pi. And then you come from pi to 2 pi. So 0 to pi, Cp upper cos theta d theta minus 1 by 2 into integral pi to 2 pi. Right? So here it is pi to 2 pi. Again, Cp lower cos theta d theta. So, by all our convention, we can finally write, say, Cd, because you have Cp, right? So, Cd is equal to 1 by 2 into integral 0 to 2 pi Cp cos theta d theta. Right? So, from our uh, discussion, we can say that you have Cp, you know Cp. Cp is equal to 1 minus 4 sin square theta plus 2 gamma by pi r v infinity sin theta. So please substitute it here and calculate. For our discussion, I would like to show that the zero integral 0 to 2 pi cos theta d theta can be 0. Similarly, integral 0 to 2 pi sin square theta cos theta d theta is equal to 0. Integral 0 to 2 pi sin theta cos theta equal to 0. So what will be the CD? So please calculate the CD. The drag on the circular cylinder for rotating case. So please calculate. So what is CD? Any anyone? Person. It is simply a multiplication, right? You know the CP value. CP is equal to one minus four sin square theta plus 2 gamma sin theta by pi r v infinity plus gamma by 2 pi r v infinity square. That you know already. So what is CD? Just an integration and integration constant also I have shown. So what is CD? Any, anyone? Sir, zero. Oh. So CD becomes zero. CD is equal to 0. Yeah. So, the drag on a cylinder in an inviscid incompressible flow is 0. 
regardless of whether it is rotating or not rotating right now the next point we need to calculate the lift lift force so let us try um, the i mean we can calculate in the similar way cl is equal to c normal force that is equal to 1 by c integral 0 to c so we can write cp at lower into dx please note it is dx minus integral 0 to c it is i mean c to 0 probably cp upper into dx so please calculate you know x is equal to r cos theta so dx equal to minus r sin theta d theta so please substitute substitute and calculate cl so your equation cl equation will become finally cl is equal to minus 1 by 2 integral 0 to 2 pi <coughs> cp sin theta into d theta again the integral integral 0 to 2 pi sin theta d theta equal to 0 integral 0 to 2 pi sin square theta d theta is equal to 0 integral 0 to 2 pi sorry sin cube theta equal to 0 sin square theta d theta becomes pi so what is cl you know cp is equal to again 1 minus 4 sin square theta plus 2 gamma sin theta by pi r v infinity that you already know plus 2 gamma sin theta by pi r v infinity plus gamma by 4 2 pi r v infinity square so what is cl sir i'm getting minus gamma by r v infinity you are getting minus gamma by r v infinity yes. by r v infinity right so this um, we can we can write is it minus it is coming 1 minus uh, 4 sin square theta yes sir it becomes plus sorry it becomes plus it will become plus right plus gamma by v infinity Uh, yeah. So now we have C L. C L is equal to gamma by R V infinity. So let us write lift per unit span. Lift per unit span. we usually denote it as l dash that is equal to cl q infinity s yes. you might have heard about this equation right cl of rho infinity v infinity square yes you are familiar with this lift equation right so let us calculate l dash what is s here What is F? Do you remember in our wingspan? 
ah span line so this is god and this is b so what we write s is equal to b into c do you remember in the uh, introduction to aero aerospace engineering i made a study all these things now in our case i write this as say i have a circular cylinder with radius um, 2 r and if i want to calculate the span right so i will take this as a unit span so let me say 2 r and 1 the unit span so what will happen to l dash what will happen to l dash cl rho infinity v infinity square into r cl what is cl you substitute cl you know cl right here you know s yes. gamma so, rho infinity v infinity rho infinity v infinity gamma so l dash is the lift per unit span l dash is equal to lift per unit span that is equal to rho infinity v infinity gamma is actually a famous equation right this is a famous equation in aerodynamics right so it is says that the lift is directly proportional to the circulation okay and this equation is called kutta joski kutta joski tira this is famously called as kutta joski tira and this is actually derived by wilhelm kutta from germany and nikolai joski from russia and uh, this famous equation we use throughout our aerodynamic discussion right so the generation of lift in a spinning cylinder are basically due to non symmetric flow right so let us say this is a circular cylinder and you have a v infinity right and because of the rotation you have higher velocity here but here you may have a lower velocity right so let me say that this is the rotation is rotation is omega and uh, say here you have a high pressure region and here you have a low pressure region right velocity increases pressure decreases and the velocity decreases pressure increases and this pressure difference creates a force called lift and we write this as a lift per unit span so spinning circular cylinder in a fluid flow produces lift is called as magnus effect i recommend you to read john d anderson to know various stories about the magnus effect and so on rotating cylinder in a fluid flow produces lift this has lot of application in the aircraft uh, i mean not in the aircraft but in the missiles the certain cases in the modern high speed aerodynamics right um, spinning the bodies are really used in the missile application right rotating circular cylinder in a fluid flow produces a lift that's all the discussion right so i stop at this point for the today's discussion um, thank you very much